Welcome back, everyone. In the many times that we've discussed Islamic law on this channel, I frequently adopted a humorous, satirical approach that even some Muslims find irresistible. However, I've also acknowledged that when we see Muhammad's morality acted out in real life, it's seriously ugly. Many of you are probably aware of the events a few weeks ago in Pakistan. These images show what life is like for minorities in a Muslim-majority country. Let's review what happened. Here's Ayman Ibrahim writing for WNG.org. Two weeks ago in Muslim-majority Pakistan, some Muslims accused a local Christian of desecrating the Quran. In response, thousands of Muslims launched attacks on churches and Christian homes in the region. First of all, it's highly improbable that a Christian would desecrate the Quran in Muslim-majority Pakistan. Nevertheless, an angry mob immediately considered the accusation factual and began its jihadi pursuit of defending Islam. Some videos show the mob wielding swords, sticks, and iron rods, attacking homes and destroying church buildings. According to press reports, they did so as the police appeared to watch without intervening. This was not a small random attack against Christians. The Pakistani government, we'll talk more about the Pakistani government soon, the Pakistani government had to deploy additional police and send in the army to control the violent mob. Official reports have not yet specified casualties, but the mob set ablaze over 26 churches and dozens of Christian homes. Of course, the actual numbers are much higher. As promised, let me pause for a second and riff on the Pakistani government. Apparently, there are people in said government who have nothing better to do than ban videos from my little channel. Over and over, I get notifications that your video is banned in Pakistan. It's remarkable that a country with such harsh laws seems so sensitive to YouTube videos. And yes, I know that those cowards will ban this video too. I'll let you know in the comments section when that happens. And by the way, the people in Pakistan are smart enough to watch channels like this using VPNs, which apparently the government isn't smart enough to figure out how to block. So sad. Let's get back to the article and get our first two takeaways. In Muslim-majority nations, Christians are often vulnerable to discrimination and persecution. They are treated as lower-class citizens, with their rights rarely protected, like the rights of majority Muslims. Worse, Christian properties and possessions are often openly targeted for violence, demolition, and vandalism. Then he continues, who are the victims, non-Muslim minorities residing under Islamic rules? The picture is heartbreaking, but it's been this way for centuries. Is the larger world paying attention? So first, that's a great question specifically for Christians. Are we paying attention? What can we do to help? What can we learn? How would we react if we were in Pakistan? And is the larger secular world paying attention? In my Western context, the answer is no. At best, our legacy media covers this stuff consistently with sympathy for the violent mobs. And that prompts us to ask some very serious, very critical questions about Western societies ideological commitments. Second, this tells us a thing or two about the hypocrisy of Western Islam. Recall that in Muslim-majority nations, Christians are often vulnerable to discrimination and persecution. They're treated as lower-class citizens with their rights rarely protected, like the rights of majority Muslims. But who are the victims? Non-Muslim minorities under Islamic rule. There is no shortage of prominent Western Muslims who make their living playing the victim. But in reality, that is exactly what their religion makes everyone else when it becomes the majority. If you want proof, again, I give you Pakistan. Let's look at our next takeaway. Muslim community leaders who attempted to stop the attack say they feel ashamed. The miscreants have presented a wrong image of Islam through their actions. Miscreants have presented a wrong image of Islam through their violent actions. I would believe that, except that I am not stupid and I can read. As an example of Muhammad's morality, Ibrahim's article recalls the story of a Jew who reportedly wrote a poem to insult Muhammad. In response, Muhammad asked his loyal Muslim companions who is ready to kill Cobb. A devoted Muslim hastened and asked, do you like me to kill him? To which Muhammad replied in the affirmative. Muhammad's example gives no tolerance to anyone insulting him. This is just one story from the most sacred Sunni Muslim traditions, and there are many similar examples in Muhammad's biography and sayings. These examples describe Muslims acting as defenders of Muhammad by launching raids and organizing attacks to kill anyone who insults him. To be sure, these defenders are portrayed as heroes of Islam. Now, maybe the Muslim man in this video is being honest. Maybe he condemns 
this sort of violence. He would be one of many. Lots of Muslims don't follow Sharia law. Lots of Muslim men don't beat their wives or sleep with their slave girls. But keep in mind, Muslims, that condemning this sort of violence or not sleeping with your slaves are some of the many ways that you demonstrate your morality is better than your prophets and your gods morality, and that would appear to present some problems for your worldview. So Christians spend their lives trying and failing to live up to Jesus's example, but Muslims look at their own prophet's example and call it the wrong image of Islam. A final takeaway comes from this scene. My own theory is that Muslims dislike the cross so much out of embarrassment that the Quran wrongly denies Jesus's crucifixion, which is one of the most certain events of the first century. But that aside, that scene is a perfect example of something I've reflected on more recently. Popular Islam, whether in the West or apparently Pakistan, frequently defines itself by what it denies. Not the cross. Push it down. Not the Son of God. Not children of God. Not the Bible. Muslim apologists don't defend their religion. They just want to know what religion someone else is so that they can tell them what Islam is not in comparison. Stop telling me what your religion denies. What does it affirm that's worthwhile? Or maybe we shouldn't care how popular Muslims answer that question. Maybe we should just look to places where Islam is overwhelmingly popular, places like Pakistan, for answers to that question. Time and time again, when we do look to those places, it's really ugly. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.